to talk about specifically is what what I call in Kentucky, okay, I, and I know it, I know where that's going in some of your minds. I call it power seating. I know in a lot of parts of the country, you guys will call it slit seating. But what we're to, I'm going to refer to it as power seating, if that's okay. It's just I've always done it that way. Uh, I know a lot of you guys call it slit seating. Call it what you will, but what I'm going to talk about is uh, lawn renovations, basically. And the machine that actually, let's see if this is fair. The one that cuts a groove in the ground, the seeds put in the ground, and now you got new grass plants coming up. Fair enough? So with that, <laughs> with that joke out of the way, I'm going to call it power seeding. I know I've got a good friend of mine up in Pennsylvania, Tim Brennan. I was talking about it one day, and he says, power seeding? What in the world? Are you talking about slit seeding? So, uh, Tim, if you happen to see this video, that's why I did that part of this introduction. That, that's, that's for you, my friend. And uh, I consider Tim a good friend. He's got a great business going up there uh, in Schenectady, uh, New York. Uh, great guy. And uh, he knows a lot about what he's doing. But let's talk a little bit about power seating. And first of all, let's talk about how, as a commercial contractor, a lot of times we're reluctant to diversify into that. And what I mean by that is Wayne's Lawn Service, my lawn and landscaping business, for many, many years, I thought, I'm not going to do that. There's no way I'm going to do that. I'm not going to kill a lawn out or I'm not going to run a power seating machine through somebody's lawn. I just don't trust it. And, you know, while we're talking about renovations and if we're going to kill a lawn out, I think everybody needs to know that in most states, or at least the states that I've talked to people in, and it requires special licensing if you're going to be spraying pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers. But if you're going to kill a lawn out, make sure that you got the proper licensing to do that. Now, you don't necessarily have to kill a lawn to run a cedar through it. Okay, there's a lot of situations where lawns just need to have the, the turf density increased in them. So it's not necessarily where a kill out would necessarily be necessary. It might be a, a pretty decent lawn and we just want to increase the density but we don't want to go through the aeration side of it and broadcast seeding, which is very effective for a lot of lawns. Uh, we've got a video on aeration as well that you can view. But uh, for the sake of today, what we're going to talk about is, you know, power seeding a lawn or slit seeding that lawn. But just don't be scared of, when I say scared, I know you're not physically scared, but don't, don't count yourself out of those profit dollars because you don't want to take the risk of, well, what if it doesn't grow? Uh, because what you're going to find out is, generally what happens when you take a machine and that's going to put that seed in the ground for you, it's going to grow. You know, you got the machine, you got the seeds, you add a little water, and it's going to be successful. And you guys that have done this enough under, know what I'm talking about. You know, we've always got some yards we got to go back on and maybe spot seed, and that's just part of it. You calculate that into your cost. I know with our service, when we give someone a price on power seating their lawn or slit seating their lawn, it's we we count that we count for everybody a certain percentage of hey we're going to have a return trip for a certain number of these people. So calculate that in your cost. I'm not I don't want to stand down here today and tell you hey this is what you should charge for that service uh, because you all know me well enough, I don't tell you anybody what to charge because everybody's costs are different, everybody's overhead's different, everybody's use rates are different. So what I can suggest from that standpoint, if you're not sure about, hey, well, what should I charge? Okay, and that's a legitimate question. Don't go out there and give this work away. That's number one uh, because there's nothing easy about it. There's nothing easy about running a machine across the lawn and, and slit seeding it or power seeding it. It's not hard. It's not the worst thing you're ever going to do, but there's certainly value in what you're going to do. And that's the nice thing about this service. There's a very narrow window of opportunity each year where we're going to be power seeding lawns. And understand that, that is, there's value in that for your customer. There's value in it for you. There's value in it for everybody. 
So this is certainly a service that you don't have to give away. Don't make that mistake. I see that all the time with contractors. You know, they're wanting to do a, a large volume of these. Then you have a year like this year across the country where we've had quite a bit of rain. You can't get them all in. And now we're struggling and now we're running out of time maybe. And so don't do that. Don't, don't put yourself into that position. It's a short window. Charge for the service you're going to provide. Give your customer excellent service, but make sure you can get it, it seated, the lawn seated at the right time. So they got time to germinate. They've got time to come in. And, uh, but we found that it, it goes back to educating your clients or educating your potential customer. You got to take the time necessary to educate your customer on why they need to consider this service. You know, everybody wants a better lawn and we all want to be healthy, right? But a lot of times we don't make the commitment to be healthy, whether it's working out or eating right, all those things, the exercise, lawns are the same way. You know, your lawn isn't just going to be a good lawn because somebody's putting weed control on it and somebody's putting fertilizer on it. It takes much more than that. And that's where your professionalism and your expertise comes into play to educate the customer that, you know, whether you're the person that's spraying it and mowing it or maybe you're just mowing it, or maybe you're just treating it, but or maybe you're doing it all, but it takes more than just mowing habits and frequency and fertilization and weed control to get a good lawn. You know, there, there's you've got to do other things to that lawn to help it be successful. Will Mother Nature survive? Absolutely. Without a doubt, it will. But we've all got those customers that just want to push that yard to the next level. And that's where power seeding and slit seeding will help push that yard to the next level, have the density where they want it. That's when your education comes into play on, hey, hey, we've got a good stand of grass out there. But now that we've got a good stand of grass, what does that potentially bring on? You know, um, Dr. A.J. Powell with the University of Kentucky, great guy. Uh, he's passed away a few years ago, but he taught me tons of information uh, about lawns, you know, and where a lot of times we go wrong. A lot of times, we, he always mentioned that sometimes people overseed. When I say overseed, put too much seed into a lawn. You know, he said, Wayne, it's kind of like an island. There's, you know, if you're on an island, you can only put so many people on that island. And yards are the same way. We don't want to get the yard too dense. So it's not something that you're going to need to do necessarily every year because if we get a yard too dense, then what don't we have? Well, we don't have good airflow through it. And if we don't have good airflow through it and we get into irrigation or rain and whatnot and we don't have the air circulation, we're going to have fungus and disease problems. So there's a fine line between a, a nicely populated or dense lawn and an overdue on it. So educate yourself a little bit as well. But also know that when you do educate yourself and then you can educate your client on how, you know, why they need to do it and how you can make some profit dollars doing it, it's a win-win for everybody involved. I know we've found most of the time when we are going to power seed a lawn that uh, we'll double pass that lawn. You know, we don't, we don't two decks the seed. We don't two rate the seed. You know, we'll, we'll cut our application rate in half, but... What we found that we'll, we'll cut that lawn, say, this away, and then we'll cut it on an angle. But just cut it in in two different angles. Uh, we'll take a hand tiller around all the edges uh, because the machine, a lot of times, will not get directly up on the edges, you know, you're, you, when we don't want to leave gaps. So we build into our cost, you know, just a, a small tiller that we're going to take on all of our seating jobs. We have someone that goes around all the edges and hand tills those edges. Our customers like it. We inform our customers that, hey, these edges are probably going to come in more dense because what happens when, you know, when we're hand seeding it, we're not at a calibrated seed rate, whereas that machine is dropping a calibrated rate. So your edges are going to think, man, my edges look great, but the yard's behind. The yard's going to catch up. And uh, we have an information piece that we give our customers, actually two, uh, uh, pieces of information on how to care for it uh, because watering is very important, right? You guys know that. But uh, we want them to 
to lightly water it repeatedly and not real heavy watering. You know, it, it's opposite of what we may do when we do sods, right? So uh, we have to educate our customers not just on what's the benefits of power seeding their lawn, but how do we get that lawn established and to come in? And what we found for people as, as another profit center for our company that comes along with the power seeding, you know, we found the people that aren't on our fertilization weed control program, you know, if you happen to offer that as well, we tell them that we can guarantee germination, but we can't guarantee establishment unless we know what, what, what's going down on it. So generally what we will do when, you know, we're talking to somebody about a lawn renovation and redoing their lawns for them and power seeding, that uh, we would like to have at least one year of their fertilization of weed control with it. That way we can control the fertilizers going down, the timing on that, the amounts of that, the rates per thousand square feet on that, the weed control, as well as the pre-emergent the following springs. And I think you'll find that most people are very receptive to that. And what, also what we found is when we've renovated that lawn and we ask them for a single season of service afterwards following that, that they become ongoing and loyal customers. So we not only made the profit dollars from the renovation of the slit seeding, but we also put on a long-term client for our fertilization weed control program that in return then becomes a contact for other services that we're offering, whether it's mulching or hedge trimming or leaf removal or maybe potentially mowing. So we, we've created a relationship with that customer. So I know I'm kind of getting off on a tangent now of, you know, selling the, your, your clients additional services, but it all starts because a lot of your competitors are not power seeding or slit seeding lawns. And we initially, we bring that client into our customer base with that, but we have a lot of other things we can sell them afterwards. And what our 39 years of experience have shown us is that Customers like working with a contractor for multiple things. They don't have, they don't want to have a fertilization weed control company. They don't want to have, have a mulching company. They don't want to have to have a, a power seeding company. You know, hey, they'd rather deal with one person. Now that that's that's great, right? That's all great. But what's the disadvantage of that? Put your thinking cap on a minute while I get me a little drink here. But what what can potentially be the disadvantage of that? That's right. You got the right answer. Yeah. The disadvantage of that potentially is if we're offering multiple service, it's a great profit center. But the disadvantage is if something goes wrong, we potentially lose all of it as well. So it makes you the contractor. It makes us the contractor step our game up a little bit and make sure that we're satisfying the needs of that client over and over and over and over again. So, uh, that, that could be a disadvantage, certainly is an advantage. You know, you lose one thing, you lose it all. But also, you gain one thing, you gain it all. So there's a lot of opportunities there. And that's, a, that's another talk when we talk about loyalty and uh, marketing and advertising. But uh, getting back to the power seating, slit seating side of this, you know, the equipment cost isn't great to get involved in it. A lot of times, you know, most of the dealers that you're buying your other equipment from, they'll have rental, rental programs there for you know seasonally where you can rent a power seeder. If not, there's a lot of good power seeders out there available at, at rental houses where you can rent one for a day, a week, a month, whatever your demand, demand may be from your customers. But what I also know you're going to find out if you just put some effort into it, and you don't have to be a large service to do this, if you just put a little bit of effort into contacting your existing customer base, you're going to find out that you're going to be able to sell them uh, on the seeding aspect of that in the fall because all of your cool season grasses that's where you're going to in your knowledge you know this uh, if you don't know it we do a little research on it the fall is the best time of the year to have this take place it's not that you don't want to do seeding in the spring but there's a little different methodology it has to go into play as far as pre-emergence and things like that it goes back to education again but the fall, we've got the cooperation of Mother Nature. We've got cooler nights. We've got nice sunny days a lot of times. And it just brings on that germination rate really well. Customers are happy. And uh, it's just a good profit center for your company. So with that being said, just uh, 
think about it and then get past the thinking stage and ask yourself, why have I not been doing this? Don't be scared to do it. Don't be like us. Don't leave those profit dollars out there for your competitor when it's an add-on service that you can do. You don't have to go out and invest in equipment the first year you want to try it. Rent some equipment, but rent a good cedar. Don't go out and rent the cheapest cedar you can get. Rent a good cedar. And then buy a good professional grade seating machine. Uh, because what you're going to spend on that seating machine, I guarantee you, if you just put a little bit of effort into it, you're going to get back tenfold that first year. If you go out and purchase a machine, let's say you go out and you spend five, six, seven thousand dollars on a machine, with a little bit of effort, you're going to pay that machine off as a one truck operation this year, plus put profit dollars into your pocket. And if not, then maybe it's going to take you two years if you don't work at it too hard or you don't go out and try to solicit the work. But it's something that, and start with your existing customer base, but put some flyers out, put it out on social media. You know, Facebook's a great place to launch it. You know, there's a lot of people out there that in the fall, they may be taking care of their lawn theirself. They may be doing their own mowing. They may be doing their own fertilization weed control. But, hey, they just want a denser lawn, and that's when they're going to come to you for it. So with that being said, let, the, let power seating be another profit center for your company. It's in the fall. Things are slowing down. You're not mowing as much, and you're going into that slower time of the year. Why not take those profit dollars, put them into your account, and hang on to them and use them to help grow your company? We miss out on a lot of these little profit centers as contractors a lot of times. A lot of these add-on services, and we'll talk more about other services in future uh, videos and podcasts. But don't miss out on power sitting like we did. I mean, a very small company as a one-truck operation you can easily go out there and without killing yourself, easily go out and sell three to five to seven thousand dollars worth of power sheeting almost by accident. I mean, you'll see it happen. Put those profit dollars in your pocket. Put a little effort into a little marketing a little bit. If you do nothing other than contact your existing customer base, I think you'll see how successful and how easy it's going to be to build this year after year after year into a, a larger profit center for your company. Appreciate your time this evening. And again, remember, you can always find us, obviously, on YouTube, SoundCloud, uh, Google Play. Go to our multimedia page on our website. Click on our multimedia page. You can go to Apple Podcasts. You can find us and listen to us any way that's convenient for you. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, and everybody have a great evening, okay? And remember, profit is not a dirty word.